Hello audience. Today we will discuss about the radiated immunity test as per military standards. MIL 461 provides the requirements for the control of electromagnetic interference emissions and susceptibility characteristics of electronic, electrical, and electromechanical equipment and subsystems designed or procured for use by activities and agencies of the Department of Defense. This MIL 461 standard having 19 tests methods with requirements and procedures. 3 Conducted Emissions Tests 10 Conducted Susceptibility Tests 3 Radiated Emissions Tests 3 Radiated Susceptibility Tests Now we discussed about the Radiated Susceptibility Test performed under the MIL 461 standard. First. RS-101, Radiated Susceptibility, Magnetic Field. Then, RS-103, Radiated Susceptibility, Electric Field. Last, RS-105, Radiated Susceptibility, Transient Electromagnetic Field. First, we discuss about the RS-101 test. Radiated Susceptibility, Magnetic Field. 30 Hz to 100 kHz. This requirement is applicable to equipment and subsystem enclosures, including electrical cable interfaces. The requirement is not applicable for electromagnetic coupling via antennas. For equipment intended to be installed on Navy aircraft, the requirement is applicable only to aircraft with anti submarine warfare capability. For Army ground equipment, the requirement is applicable only to vehicles having a mine sweeping or mine detection capability. This test procedure is used to verify the ability of the equipment under test, EUT, to withstand radiated magnetic fields. RS-101 Test Viewpoints Some equipment suppliers tend not to conduct the RS-101 testing because it can be exempted if the equipment is installed some distance away from the magnetic field sources. However, a technical justification demonstrating for the RS-101 test exemption is ambiguous. There are needs to define the exemption criterion when equipment is installed sources of magnetic fields. The RS-101 test exemption criterion needs to be reasonably defined for distances from the magnetic field sources. And the margin analysis can be used as a reference to judge whether the RS-101 test is required or exempted. The RS-101 test requirement is applicable to equipment and subsystem enclosures, including electrical cable interfaces. The test equipment consists of a signal source a radiating loop, a loop sensor, a measurement receiver or a narrowband voltmeter, a current probe, and line impedance stabilization networks as shown in figure. When the MIL 461 RS-101 test procedures are applied, the loop sensor will be located 5 cm from the EUT face or electrical interface connector being probed. Corresponding commercial requirements are as per IEC 61048, IEC 61049 and IEC 61046. RS-103 Radiated Susceptibility, Electric Field, 2 MHz to 40 GHz. This requirement is applicable to equipment and subsystem enclosures in all interconnecting cables. RS-103 covers the frequency range of 2 MHz to 18 GHz with an option to extend the upper frequency to 40 GHz, if specified. The tuned frequency of antenna-connected receivers is not applicable for Army and Air Force requirements. Receivers with permanently connected antennas may exhibit reduced performance during in-band testing but must recover after the in-band exposure is removed. Horizontal and vertical antenna polarization testing is applicable above 30 MHz. In the 200 MHz to 1 GHz frequency range the antenna, positioning should expose the at plus 35 cm of cable at the at end of the cable. Above 1 GHz, the position includes the UT plus 7 cm of cable. 
with the various antenna positions. The E-field sensor is placed to be in the antenna coverage and note that above 1 GHz the elevation of 30 cm may be reduced to place the sensor in the area being illuminated by the radiating field. Avoid placing the sensor at a UT corner as of edges that may provide a shadow effect that could create a sensor measurement error. The requirement at the tune frequency of an antenna connected receiver is 20 dB above the RE102 limit associated with the particular platform application. This test procedure is used to verify the ability of the equipment under test, EUT, and associated cabling to withstand electric fields. Unless the EUT is directly involved in the calibration process. The testing may subject the EUT to over-testing because the loading effects of the EUT are simulated by an absorber volume. Corresponding commercial requirements are as per IEC 61043 and IEC 61046. RS-105 Radiated Susceptibility, Transient Electromagnetic Field this requirement is applicable to equipment and subsystem enclosures when the equipment or subsystem is to be located external to a hardened, shielded, platform or facility. The requirement is applicable for equipment intended solely for use on non-metallic platforms when specified by the procuring activity. The requirement is applicable to Army aircraft for safety critical equipment and subsystems located in an external installation. This test procedure is used to verify the ability of the equipment under test EUT, enclosure to withstand a transient electromagnetic field. The RS-105 test method specified in MIL-461 addresses the risk of radiated exposure to an EMP event. RS-105 testing is generally applicable for equipment installed in exposed and partially exposed environments. The U.S. Navy requires RS-105 testing for nearly every installation platform, surface ships, submarines, and aircraft, to ground applications. The RS-105 pulse characteristics consist of a fast rise time, short pulse duration and high amplitude which resemble those of an actual EMP. Peak field strengths of 50 kV per meter are specified for exposed equipment. The purpose of RS-105 testing is not to damage the equipment, but to determine its immunity threshold to the electromagnetic pulse. This is performed by starting at 10% of the peak field level and gradually increasing field until susceptibility is determined or the specified peak field level is reached. It is important to note that RS-105 evaluates the equipment enclosure's ability to attenuate and withstand the effects of an EMP, not its cabling. The RS-105 test setup requires that all metallic interconnecting cabling including power input lines are routed in shielded conduits and or underneath the ground plane to minimize coupling. Corresponding commercial requirements are as per IEC 61420. We summarize that, the radiated susceptibility testing is included with most qualification test programs especially RS-103. The testing can be very time-consuming but can be automated with the feedback from the sensor. Monitoring the EUT performance continually is an integral part of the process and note that the simulation and monitoring equipment can easily be susceptible so isolation in the test configuration design needs to be considered. Thanking you.